So this is a continuation of the message series for this month titled Simply Hope. The idea behind the message series is that as we discover this truth about Jesus and Easter and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we find hope that helps us to live better by faith every day, that gives us purpose each morning to not just look into eternity and see there's a place for us, but to believe today, tomorrow, and the next day, God has something for us to do and be and become, and that we live this hope out. And as we live this hope out, we discover that our life is better now than it was before we encountered Jesus Christ. But then we realize that's not the end of the story, that this hope is not just about us. In fact, it's about Christ, and that Christ wants us to share this hope with others. And that's where we are today, talking about sharing this hope. So we're going to be catching fish today. Hope you're ready. Did you bring your fishing pole? Oh, wait, you don't need one. Huh, that's not that kind of fishing today. Although you have helped me some. We'll talk about that in a minute. Many of you are in the mood to fish, I know. And I want to talk about how it's important for us to realize that the work of of our lives is really meant to be about how we discover a faith expands our mind and realize, helps us realize that our life is more than just us, that we're created for something greater. And that as we discover what we're created to be, that we go out into the world and we become the people we're meant to be and we bring others to know this Christ who has caught us and captured our mind and our attention and changed our life. Well, I've got some ideas for you this morning. First idea this morning is this, that the church, Christians, are in the business of fishing. Is that the kind of business you're planning on living your whole life? And what business did you think Christians were in the business of doing, huh? I'm telling you, the whole thing the church is about is all about fishing, nothing else. Some of you love fishing, so you should be excited. Hey, this has been your place the whole time, you just didn't know it, right? I mean, what is it? I've discovered, by the way, there are a number of you who believe that the church is all about fishing, and you helped me to prove this by sending me some photos of yourself in the act of fishing. Like, look at this one right here. There's a, a Bob Paul and his, and his son, and they are fishing. He told me that his son caught a, I saw him after the first service, he said his son caught a catfish right around that time, hauled it in, and the dad looked at the fish and the catfish and said, well, let's throw that one back. I mean, it's a big catfish. And the son said, no, we are cooking this. We are eating this fish. And Bob was thinking, I don't want to clean the fish. <laughs> I don't want to, his son didn't know what it meant to take a catfish and take it from alive to eating and, and the work that's involved. Um, so that was not a good day for the dad, but it was a great day for the son. All right, fishing. Well, there's a Dolores Jenkins. She was in first service. If you can see, Dolores is, she's shorter than me. She's about this tall, and she caught a fish that's as big as her. That's a pretty good fisherman. Fisherwoman. Fisherwoman. Another picture. Who else do we have here? This good fisher man, fisherwoman. There's Dennis Murray. He was in first service. Dennis is not content with fishing in the summer or in the spring or in the fall. He doesn't mind if it's cold weather. In fact, he's going to go where, uh, well, I mean, in my mind, that's really dedication. So uh, Dennis can catch fish in ice. We've got to love that. Where else? Who else is that? Oh, there's, uh, there's uh, the Twelmans. So we've got Josh and Austin Twelman, dad and son, learning to fish. Nothing like that. I hope you brought your... Uh, your uh, swim fins, your little flippers uh, saved you there. Oh, uh, David uh, Fleming, you might have seen him in the lobby. He was selling some birdhouses. David has the right idea, in my opinion. You might catch fish. You might not. But when you're on the beach, who cares, right? What you don't see is just off to the left is David's drink that's keeping him going. It's water, folks, of course. But that's why he's smiling so big. Not just the fish, but he's just having a good day. Who else do we have up here? Well, there's, there's Jake. I just saw Jake walk in. There's Jake and, uh, and Kelsey. That's a good-looking fish there. Jake, did you bring any for us? No, he didn't. He didn't have any with us. But Oh, and then we've got the coals. Yeah, look, look at that. Those are some great fish the, that uh, the coals have caught. I think it's fantastic. We'll see another picture of them in just a second, in fact. And this is, uh, this is Jay Deshong on the left-hand side, and then his kids. Jay's catching some bait with that net, and then that bait led to these gigantic fish at the top, and then the little bitty fish. Lyle Allen was in first service, too. You can see that's one of his proud days. We're out on the lake. He caught something really fantastic. Who else is up there? Oh, Mike Cochran up there in the media booth right now. Look at him showing off. That fish weighs literally as much as Mike does now. It's amazing how big that fish is. So great job there, Mike. Oh, there's the, and see the coals, they decide, you know, rod and reel, net. That's boring. Let's grab our, let's grab our bow and arrow. We're going to catch some fish because, I mean, that's real you know, that's, that's, that's real fishing, right? Thank you all for the fishing pictures. What you have proven 
is that here at Cornerstone, we realize that the church business is fishing. The earliest followers of Christ, a lot of them happened to be professional fishermen. It's how they kept their families fed. It's their livelihood. And they went out on the Sea of Galilee one night after they had encountered the resurrected Jesus Christ, the one who's raised from death. And they decided, well, it's time to go fishing. And they went out there on that lake like they'd done all their life. And it was just one of those nights where they just didn't catch anything. But they led us to be an understanding what it means to be a follower of Christ. It means that we are in the business of going out into the world and finding others who need to know about this resurrected Jesus. They need the same hope. And that's what we're really meant to be doing is going out there and finding the next person who needs to know about this hope, this faith, this truth, this love. Second idea this morning is this. Catching fish requires a willingness to do whatever is needed to succeed. I mean, you can see We're going to use fishing poles, we're going to do it on the beach, we're going to do it on a boat, we're going to do it in the ocean, we're going to do it in ice, we're going to use a net, we'll even use a bow and arrow if we need to, to catch fish. The whole idea behind being a follower of Christ is we will do whatever it takes to succeed. I mean, again, the scripture says this to us today. Simon Peter says, I'm going out to fish. The disciples say, sure, let's go. When do they go? They go in the afternoon when they don't have anything else to do? No, they go in the middle of the night. They spent all night fishing. Now, they didn't catch anything, which isn't great, but they went out there. Listen, our intention as followers of Christ is to do whatever we need to do to be able to catch fish. This is the greatest challenge for Christians, so hear me to this one. The greatest challenge for us is that sometimes we want to be comfortable. That's the third idea. Some fishers have been in what comfort when they're fishing. They want comfortable fishing conditions. Now, I'll tell you, before we get to this third idea any farther, I just want to go back to the second for a second. You don't have to go back to it, Mike, but, but we have to realize that in order for us to fulfill our purposes as followers of Christ, in order for us to really understand what it means to be in the business of fishing, we have to be willing to completely sell out and do whatever it takes to catch those fish. And we often get confused, especially in the church world. Now, I've been a, a churchgoer my whole life, 48 years. And I know church people, right? And I know the greatest downfall of church people is they get caught up in getting comfortable. I mean, sometimes you want to go fishing, you want to look at like this, you don't want to be in a boat like that. (laughs) Now that's ridiculous, isn't it? That's ridiculous. But I have to tell you, church folks, it doesn't matter if you're a person who's 85 years old and you want to go to one of those tall, steepled, stained glass windowed pipe organ churches. Are you one of those folks who believes that church should be as cool as it possibly can be and you want your pastor to have ripped jeans and you want to make sure that the, there are lights and, and all kinds of smoke uh, kinds of effects and you've got special kinds of cool things happening on the screens or any kind of church in between? Church folks always fall into the trap of wanting to make their fishing boat as comfortable as possible and they take their eyes off the job, which is not to be comfortable but to catch fish. Back in 2000, we built this building. It was completed in 2001. My predecessor, who led us to that, to, to the, the decision and to the willingness to be here and to be Cornerstone, Dr. John Ray was here in first service, and he'll tell you, we planned on being in this room for five to seven years, and then we were gonna build a tall, steepled sanctuary right out in front here that would seat over 600 people, and it would be super cool and clean and comfortable. It is so easy for us to think that's the end goal, and that's wrong. The end goal of being a follower of Christ is not to make the nicest, most comfortable place we can find so we can sit back and relax. No. We're about fishing, not about chilling. The first guy to say, I want to make sure there is a place that has people who are worshiping God in O'Fallon, before it was even called O'Fallon, was this crazy guy who rode up on a horse, a Methodist circuit rider, and, and he braved the crazy Missouri weather on a horse back in 1807 to make sure there were people who knew about this way of being Christian called Methodism. He did not have any creature comforts. He had a horse that took him through mud and swollen rivers and streams, through snow, sleet, icy cold weather, crazy hot weather, He bore the burden of the terrible conditions because he had this hope 
that he had to share with others. That is our history. That's our heritage. That is who we're meant to be. The town hall we'll have in a, in a little while here is going to talk about and show you great pictures of our, our expected next steps in building renovation and expansion that should be attractive to us and to others. It is not the end result. The end result is then to inspire us to go out into the world and find those people who need to know about this, this hope we have and bring them back in. We're not fishing for our own comfort. We're fishing for others who desperately need this, this God, this faith, this Christ that we know. Fourth idea this morning is this. The role of the church is to do what the chief fisher of men and women wants us to do. Again, what's the point of church? It is not to have a great social club where you can go and have good parties, you can you know, be entertained, where you can get fed good food, literally or spiritually speaking. The point of church is to do what the chief fisher of men and women wants us to do. The scripture again says to us this morning, Jesus said to them, cast the nets to the right side of the boat and you'll find some fish. Did he mean right hand side of the fish or put your nets in the right spot? Or does it mean both? Hear me, Christian. This morning you are called, no matter what age you are, no matter what you do for a living, you are called to go out into the boat, so to speak, and fish and place your net in the right side of the boat because there's someone there you know who needs to know about this Christ. I have people all the time tell me, I've gone to church my whole life. I only have friends who go to church. I only have family who go to church. I don't know anybody who doesn't go to church. You have not talked to Jesus lately because you do know someone who doesn't go to church. Your job is to begin praying. God, how can I learn how to fish for those people and even know where to fish? And then your job is to get in the boat and get out there and to go fish. Again, we are called to do what the chief fisher of men and women is telling us to do. We're called to be obedient to this Christ who gives himself up is brought back to life, and then gives us new life and new hope every day. Because others are needing that same Christ too, we're called to follow him and do what he calls us to do. All right, fifth idea is this. Christ will offer us opportunities to share God's gracious hope, but we have to be unselfish, open-minded, and stubbornly determined to succeed. Now, I don't know if you know this about me, but I am a stubborn man. It's just in my nature to be bullheaded quietly, oftentimes to myself, and to, to choose what I believe is the right direction and to not give up on it. It's not always fun to be in the house with me sometimes when I get stubborn about something. Christians, you're supposed to be stubborn in your undying desire to succeed for Christ. You should be so open-minded, we should all be so open-minded to the various opportunities and methods and avenues for reaching out into the world and connecting with people who don't know us or don't know our church or don't know Christ. And we should be willing to be unselfish, to say, listen, I would prefer to wear a suit, but instead I'm going to wear one of these shirts that you wear untucked I'm going to preach to you like this, all right? We should be willing to say, I will do whatever I need to do to reach out to someone else. You know, a good fisherman doesn't say, I'm only going to fish in certain places. A fisherman says, I'm going to catch fish, and I'll figure out how to do it. So Christians, what are you willing to do? Let's see what the scripture again says to us. Again, it says, so the disciples, they cast their nets, and now they weren't able to haul it in because there were there were so many fish in their net. That's what we're dreaming about. That's what we're called to as followers of Christ. That's what Cornerstone is meant to be. So this, this funeral spray here, these flowers that are by me, don't just represent the love of the Dubach family for Annie Dubach. They remind us that our church has been in a community and is part of a community that has radically changed in the last 40 years. When Annie Dubach and her husband moved to O'Fallon, 
They just had little bitty kids, and this was a little bitty two-barber town. There were just a few people living in O'Fallon. It was a small town, and this is what people who went to our church at the time, it was called Williams Memorial Church, United Methodist Church. They said almost everybody goes to Williams Memorial or, or has someone that does go to Williams Memorial in the entire town of O'Fallon. That was the perception. It was just a small town. Annie Dubach's family would, would get to know other folks and they would go, she and her husband and their kids, they'd go over to one person's house for dinner one night then the, another family would come over to their house and it was just, they'd go to church and other kinds of church kinds of events and, and it was a, we were a small town church in a little bitty small town. And then something happened. People started moving out of the city to O'Fallon. Many of you did or your parents did. And now we're projecting that in something like 10 years, O'Fallon will have over 100,000 people in, in its uh, city limits. We'll have gone from being an obscure little town to being one of the very largest uh, communities in Missouri. We're already the seventh largest. We'll be larger than the seventh largest soon. And that calls us as a church to think differently about where we put our nets And what are our expectations for in terms of how we fish, where we fish, and what we will see as success. We have to literally open ourselves up as a church in order to build on our legacy of faith and connect to the next generations in our community. So here's some questions I want us to be thinking about as we think about our work in the fishing business. First, what are you willing to do to catch fish for Christ? Now, there are some things you aren't willing to do, right? When I think about actual fishing, your pastor is only willing to fish for so long. Because I'm one of those guys who can take my wife and my kids to one of those lakes where they stock the fish, and then a guide comes out and he shoots this, this bird or this uh, fish food out onto, the, you know, out onto the lake, and then you see all the fish coming up and eating, and then the kids and the wife all throw the fishing lines out and they're hauling in fish and I'm the guy who just sits there right I can only do that for so long now some of you 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 can never get enough fishing well I'm not like that when it comes to fishing for Christ I'm willing to sit out in any condition are you second is your comfort worth more to you than being obedient to Christ I think this is a great challenge for us being open to other people, open to new ideas, open to new structures within the church, open to to think that in order for us to be successful as a church, we can't just open the doors of a brand new shiny building and think the world's just gonna stream in. That we literally have to think like our forefathers and foremothers of Methodist faith who built this church, and we need to be willing to go out into the community and do as much ministry outside the walls of the church and the windows of the church as we do within them. Our comfort needs to be secondary to our willingness to throw our net on the proper side of the boat. Third, will you and I listen to Christ's leadership and go where the fish are? I'll talk about this more next Sunday, but I think going where the fish are is as crucial as anything. That history tour we'll have in just a few minutes that covers the history of Cornerstone takes people to four other locations where six other buildings have, have been built. You know, our church has been willing to build when our building's been flooded. We've been willing to build after we, we actually started in a fort. We've built in conditions where we've had tornadoes destroy our building, where we've realized our building's too small. We've done whatever we need to do to continue to go where Christ leads us to go in order to continue to be in the business of fishing for Christ. The hope we have in Jesus Christ is meant to be a hope that challenges us to see that Christ has found you and me, and we're supposed to receive that grace when we're ready to say yes to an eternal life that begins today. And then we start living that hope out, living better by faith every day, learning to serve God, follow Christ, live in the Spirit of God. But as we do this, as we listen to this Spirit leading us, we are called to go into the fishing business and share this hope with others. My prayer for you today is that you would be totally opened up to the simple idea that you can be an eternal fisherman or fisherwoman 
for Christ. Will you pray with me? God, simply help us to catch fish. Not just next week when we go fishing out in a boat, but every day when we're realizing that you've given us breath to breathe and we say thank you and then we have some coffee with a friend who doesn't go to church or we see that neighbor who isn't going to church or we think about that family member or that friend. God, help us to see we've got a chance to fish for women and men and bring them to your son. Help us to be better at fishing. In Christ's name, amen.